guys, today I'm back with another declutter video. It is all about powders today, and I thought that may be a bore, but I asked you on Twitter and you said declutter it for me, so here we are. If you're curious about this look, I just filmed a ColourPop try-on haul, so I will link to that down below. And if you know me at all, you know that I have oily skin, so I got a lot of powders, and I'm always trying to find a good under eye powder as well. So we're covering the gamut of powders today. And if you'd like more videos on oily skin, powders, all that good stuff, be sure to subscribe and I will have some more videos that may be of interest to you listed down below. I have done declutters on foundation, highlighters, bronzers, and concealers so far, and they were all excessive. They will be listed down below, and today should probably be no different. If a powder is new today and I'm going to be getting rid of it, it will be donated to a shelter here in Toronto called Sistering, and if I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it and then if I'm gonna get rid of it and it has be used has been used I will hand it off to a friend family member or fellow a blogger or youtuber I recently went to an event and brought a huge Ziploc bag if you watch my vlogs <laughs> of highlighters and like handed them out to people I was like here take them take them they can't be in my collection anymore so that's always fun anyways let's go ahead and get started So here is what we are working with. For some reason it was really hard for me to fit all of the powders in the uh, frame today. But anyways, I have about a hundred powders here. So let's go ahead and get sorting. Right off the bat, I can tell you there's already a few powders missing from the pile. I don't see the Urban Decay Velvetizer in there. And there is only one of my CoverGirl Outlast powders. I have it in two different shades. But I'm pointing this one out first because I really, really love it. I'm always getting asked about recommendations for powders for oily skin, and I am going to do a video on that. But um, right off the bat, I'll tell you that I absolutely love this one, and I'll be keeping it. And if you're wondering about my nails, they'll be linked down below. They're just press-ons from Kiss, and this is day number seven, and I'm really impressed. Another powder that I quite enjoy is from Becca. This is their Soft Light Blurring Powder, and I have them in both shades. So I'm going to keep Golden Hour and get rid of Pink Blur, but it's just a really soft, smooth powder. And I've had a bunch of requests to review their new Hydra Mist which I will um, they are sending that to me so I should get that in the next couple days so stay tuned for that in an upcoming video a powder that I have repurchased time and time again is the Mac studio fix powder this is probably my fifth of it so definitely keeping this also from Mac I have the mineralized skin finish and no joke I think I bought this in 2011 so time to back to Mac this and I'm also going to back to back the next to nothing powder it's not that I don't like it I just have enough powders and I don't feel strongly about it but if you didn't know I think it's six empty products that you can bring into Mac with the exception of maybe pencil lip and eyeliners but you can bring them in to the store or to one of their counters and get a free lipstick or free eyeshadow. So it's a really great program because you're recycling, they're recycling the product and then you're not wasting the packaging and then you also get something out of it as well. Two powder foundations that I really like, the Bare Minerals Bare Pro, which I have reviewed and I will link down below along with the Too Faced Cocoa Powder powder. I haven't reviewed this, but it is just a really nice, easy powder if you just want to throw something on for a couple hours. So I have this one in the shade Tan and then the uh, Toffee 19 in Bare Pro, so I'm keeping these. I have two powder foundations that I'm getting rid of. The first is from Sephora. I reviewed this one as well. It was just patchy, did not keep me matte. I didn't like it, it oxidized like crazy. And then from Estee Lauder, I bought this at a CCO a few years ago before I knew what shade I was in Estee Lauder, and this is 5W2. I have 4W1 and then 4W2, which is a little bit deep, so this is definitely too dark for me, but I do wanna try this in my proper shade. I have two Dermablend loose setting powders, so obviously I only need one. Also from Dermablend, I have their Intense Powder Camo Foundation, which I have reviewed. I'm gonna keep the shade Coco and get rid of Honey. This is a really nice powder foundation. I have two Rimmel Insta Fix and Matte Powders. As you can see, the packaging is a little different. This one is like a matte pink and this one is like a pink metallic. Anyway, so they're, they're the same thing and I have used this one so I'm going to keep it. I do like it uh, and then I'm going to get rid of this one. There's so many Rimmel powders here. This one is probably my favorite. They're clear complexion so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to get rid of these two Stay Mattes just because neither of them are the translucents so they don't really work for my skin. And then I'm going to get rid of the Match Perfection just because it has a bit of a pink undertone to it which doesn't really work for me selection of essence powders here. They're color correcting. 
compact powder which is supposed to be mattifying all about matte fixing compact and then all about matte fixing compact which is a waterproof so i'm going to keep the waterproof one and get rid of the other three this one i would have kept but i mean it's essentially the same as this one and then these two this one is kind of like a beige shade and then this one really didn't color correct so i have a nyx no filter powder here in the shade 10 which is just cracked down the middle i don't know if you can see so that's gonna go and then i don't really want to try and fix it i don't care enough and then um i also have these black radiance powders that I don't really know where they came from, maybe a swap or something, but I haven't reached for them in like four years, so these will also go. I will keep this no filter powder in the shade 11 though. It's a nice soft powder, not incredibly mattifying, but it's nice. I have a ton of powder foundations here that I need to review. Actually, let me check the shade of this BH Cosmetics one. Might be a little dark, but let me know out of like all the powder foundations here that you see, let me know what you'd like to see reviewed. I have the Tarte um, Amazonian Clay. This is a Smashbox powder foundation which I think that shade will work for me. And then I also have the Tarte, um, what was this even called? Confidence Creamy Powder Foundation. So let me know what you would like to see reviewed. I'm gonna keep all four of these. I also have these powder foundations, so let me know what you're thinking, the Dior Forever, and then the Balm Photo Balm. Curious, I really have not played with this very much. The packaging is so cute. This is another one of my favorite mattifying powders, Neutrogena Shine Control. Unfortunately, not available here in Canada. I pick it up when I'm in the States. This one broke and I tried to repress it and I already have another one, so I'm just gonna keep this one, but I really do like it and I have repurchased it. So I have these three compacts from Clarins. Two of them are powder foundations and then one of them is like a mattifying powder. And this is the smoothest mattifying powder ever so I'm gonna keep that and then I'm gonna get rid of just one of these powder foundations and let me know if you'd like a review I don't know why everything is so freaking dirty but these are two powders that I have basically not touched at all but I have the Too Faced Peach Blur and then this is from Nude by Nature which is new to Shoppers Drug Mart and this is their Radiant Loose Powder Foundation so I'm gonna keep these let me just rapid fire through a few powders I know I, I'm keeping I have the Ben Nye Banana Powder which I actually rediscovered in a recent Shop My Stash video so I really like this and then I also have the Makeup Revolution dupe so maybe I will put them to the test against each other then from Laura Mercier the loose setting powder I'm a I'm a late bloomer when it comes to this powder but I really do like it so I'm keeping it from Dior this is their loose matte powder it's great then I have been testing out the Laura Mercier secret brightening against the Becca and I find them incredibly similar I've tested them on each like on side by side on my eyes and I really don't see a whole lot of difference so they're both good I'll keep them from Kat Von D this is her brightening powder I wasn't blown away by this I was expecting it to have the same pigmentation as her contour kit but it is good and then similarly to that powder these are from elf and rhodiol they're loose under eye setting powder so I'm keeping those and a classic Coty Airspun. It stinks to the high heavens, but it is a nice setting powder. Three more under eye powders that I like. The Makeup Forever Micro Finishing Powder Pressed in Banana. And then I'm at a, I'm a little bit torn here because this is the same powder. One is small, one is big, obviously. I think I might keep this one because it's better for travel. I really don't have many pressed little, if any actually, besides the loose ones. I don't have anything pressed that's little to set the under eye. And then I guess I'll get rid of this one. I really do like this powder. They make a good contour powder as well. These powders are all in the mattifying category. So I'm gonna get rid of this, although it's super cute. It's the Blot Party. It's just too big. From Wet n Wild, this is their mattifying powder. I need to check and see if this is still around. If it is still a product they sell, I'm gonna test it out more and keep it. From Kat Von D, this is her Blot Powder. I'm gonna keep that. The Balm Sexy Mama, Soap and Glory, one heck of a blot. And then the Urban Decay. This is like old school Urban Decay packaging, but I did buy it late last year. It is their D-Slick powder, which I haven't played with much. From Maybelline, I have a bunch of powders. Then <laughs> I have the Fit Me Loose, which I have been enjoying. The Better Skin, which I also like and I do wear this as a powder foundation. It's not like the most long lasting ever, but it is nice, quick, and easy. And then the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless, which I have hip pan on, so I obviously like. So I'm gonna keep all of these. These are powders that I don't know if they even exist anymore. I guess the Ready Set Gorgeous does. Um, but I'm going to get rid of it. It says the shade 310, but it's just far too dark because um, I wear 310 in their foundations and that's just too dark. And then remember Revlon Nearly Naked? Remember? I used to love this powder. I liked the foundation, but it doesn't exist anymore. So it will go. I have some loose banana powders here. So the first is from Beauty Bakery. I'm going to keep this, but the shade yellow is too deep for my under eyes. So if you have a deeper skin tone, this is a good option. Same can be said for the Hard Candy 
Bake Brighten and Set. It is quite deep, so it's a great drugstore option if you're looking for a yellow powder for your under eyes if you have a deeper skin tone. But I think I like it to set my primer under my foundation. I've been playing around with setting my primer. And then I just recently picked this up. It's the Sacha Buttercup Setting Powder. This one is in the light. There's also a darker one if you do have a deeper skin tone. Just so many loose powders, but I really like to, to have a variety, as I've mentioned before. Um, I like to have a variety of brands in case I want to do a full face or comparison, whatever it may be. So the RCMA powder, really, I didn't, I don't think I like it that much, but I got to keep playing with it. I feel like I see like Jaclyn Hill and Kathleen Lights and they love it on their under eyes and they have a drier skin type, but I find this makes me look really dry under the eyes. So we'll continue to play with that. I love the Inglot mattifying powder. So I'm keeping that from NYC. This is their smooth skin powder. We'll keep, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna keep all of these. Stellar Beauty, they're Canadian. Actually, maybe I'll get rid of this one because I do have other Makeup Forever powders. This is the Makeup Forever Micro Finishing Loose Powder. So, yeah, I'll get rid of that one. I have another Makeup Forever. And then this is the Tarte, what is this? Smooth Operator? Smooth Operator. I haven't played with this much, so I'll keep it. Let's talk Canadian brands for a moment. Oh wait, this is not a Canadian brand, but I'm gonna mention it anyways. <laughs> Hard Candy Color Correcting Powder, gonna get rid of it. I kind of feel like color correcting powders are a waste of time. I'm also gonna get rid of the Joe Fresh version as well. I am gonna keep the Quo Setting Powder, I think this is. Radical Blur Translucent Powder, I will keep this. This is from Dion, they're a brand from East Coast. Woo woo, East Coast Canada. Um, but the shade is too light for me, so it will go. I forgot this in my Canadian brand mentions. If you didn't know, Face Atelier makes really beautiful products. They're primarily kind of makeup artists, but they definitely do make nice stuff. And this is their Ultra Press Powder in Medium, really beautiful smooth powder, nice pigmentation, so I'm gonna keep it. A few powders that are going from L'Oreal. This is their Infallible Pro Glow. It's far too light for me. I thought I could use it under my under eyes, but I don't like it. The e.l.f. pressed mineral foundation was discontinued from Revlon. This is their color stay powder. Has anyone tried this? I feel like I've never heard anybody talk about it, but again, too light for me. And then from Paul and Joe, this is another one of their kind of color correcting powders. And it was limited edition last winter, so you can't even buy it anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of it. To contradict myself, this is also limited edition and you can't buy it anymore, but I'm keeping it because of the compact. And I actually do quite like the powder. It is from the Victoria Beckham Estee Lauder collection, their skin perfecting powder. So I'm gonna keep this. And then this is what we have left. So I reviewed this Color Science powder. This is a powder foundation that I would recommend to somebody with dry skin. It's so creamy and beautiful and pigmented. I really like it. So I'm gonna keep it. Then this is the MAC, what is this? Okay, there's like no label on it, but I think it is their Studio Fix Perfecting Powder, but I think it's too dark for me, but this, it's really beautiful. Yeah, that shade is too dark, so that's gonna go, sadly. Then from Wet n Wild, this is their Pressed Contact Compact Powder in Gold and Tan. I'll keep that for Wet n Wild stuff. The L'Oreal Pro Matte Powder, I like this, and I'm gonna keep it. Cover Girl Vitalist Healthy Powder, this is a beautiful, smooth powder. Ulta Double Duty Powder. I bought this years ago with the intention of reviewing it and I haven't, so that will stay. Hard Candy Translucent Finishing Powder. I just took this out of the packaging, haven't tried it, so I'll keep it. The Body Shop has a, I think, is this a cream or powder? Did I grab the wrong thing? No, this is a powder foundation, so I'm gonna try that. From LA Girl, I have their Pro Face High Definition Matte Press Powder, so um, I'm gonna keep this. I am gonna review their Pro, Matte pow their Pro Matte Foundation, but it's not available anywhere in Canada besides Ulta right now, and I don't need to spend $100 on the Ulta website just so that I can get free shipping of that foundation, so stay tuned. Um, but I will keep that powder from Pure. This came in like a holiday kit. I'm gonna get rid of it. And then from Tarte, this is their Filtered Light setting powder and I think I'm gonna get rid of it because I have the smooth operator I have a bunch of other tart stuff so I'll get rid of this one so here is the finished product I don't know if you can tell I have the ones that I'm keeping kind of messily laid over here sorry I'm holding the camera with my hand so it might be a little shaky and then this is what I'm getting rid of over here laid out more neatly so I'm getting rid of about 35 of a hundred so I think I did a pretty good job. I'd say this is not my most successful declutter, but <laughs> you know, it's something. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you would like to see decluttered next. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.